welcome everyone uh, another 9 pm night live uh, from from saligaon welcome welcome to goa as you know i like meeting people uh, from all over the place who are doing all kinds of interesting things and uh, today we have with us a rather interesting person called milen kamat whom I have been tracking online for quite some time now. Milen has this unusual hobby, hobby of uh, philately with a specialization in uh, Portuguese India stamps. So, so Milen, if you could tell us how you got it, how you got into it. Yeah, so uh, I started as most of uh, stamp collectors start as uh, you know schoolboy collectors as they call it. I started my hobby collecting practically each and everything that came my way. Uh, every country that produced a stamp was my target, and my mother actually encouraged me. Uh, she got me, uh, you know albums and then the, the new issues that were getting uh, released i used to collect that uh, that further continued uh, when i was in college i wanted the only source to get stamps and postcards i also collect postcards i was through pen friends so i had at one point of time almost 40 uh, pen files from different different countries um, and i started collecting them and when I started working, that time the hobby took a break because of long hours and commitments, work commitments. I couldn't uh, do anything. So the pretty much the stamp collection was uh, kept in the attic until one day, about almost 30 years back, when I, it, I remember that it was uh, 15th August. Uh, it was a public holiday. It was an afternoon. Uh, suddenly, you know, I thought of uh, my uh, stamp collection. I, I uh, you know, climbed up on the attic and got my collection down and I found some uh, letters that came to my grandfather from uh, Anjuna. His relatives, uh, his cousins actually had written to him. And then I thought uh, about, you know, uh, why not uh, actually collect stamps of Goa? That time I didn't know anything about Portuguese India as such and, you know, uh, uh, the stamps that, that were issued, etc. I had no idea, absolutely. Just because I had few covers with uh, nice stamps on that, I started, uh, you know, I decided to collect it for two main reasons. One, it was a politically extinct country, so I don't have to track new issues. And there is a finite uh, population of stamps, almost 700 stamps or so, um, basically, to collect. So I thought that it would be easier to, you know, get some completion rather than chasing uh, each and every country or uh, for that reason even India because new issues keep on coming and then you have to get it, uh, get uh, you know collect them. That's how I started but I realized later that uh, some of those times are very very rare to get and uh, I'll talk about the challenges later but uh, yeah pretty much I started. I decided to focus only on Portuguese India because one is that it's related to Goa so some kind of uh, you know uh, um, there is a historical importance to that, and of course, I belong to my origins are from Goa. So that actually got me interested. That's that's uh, that's pretty uh, interesting, Milin, of how you got involved. Yeah. Sorry, there's a little bit of noise in the background, but but we'll carry on. That's fine. Okay. Uh, okay. You know what what I, what I was really wondering is, before we got started, we were just talking about uh, stamp collecting today. Is the hobby growing yeah. or declining or what? Yeah, so uh, actually, stamp collecting as a hobby is it was called of uh, it was called as hobby of kings at one point of time because especially most of the royals were uh, you know collecting them and that actually got the hobby more acceptance and more followership. But it's ultimately related to the usage of uh, stamps on letters, right? And as you know that because of electronic media and private couriers. Uh, usage of stamps is, uh, has got uh, reduced and the new generation is unfortunately is not uh, interested in uh, you know stamps so if you go to any stamp exhibition that happens there's a national stamp exhibition that happens and even uh, regional uh, stamp exhibitions that take place 
you will find that most of the people are not youngsters they are uh, pretty much uh, you know senior middle aged uh, collectors that that are present so uh, but there is in the west and even in our country also there is whoever is actually collecting uh, is a serious uh, collector you know there is lot of uh, research that to do and they find more information present it uh, over there there are exhibitions in which you can actually present your collection i haven't done so but uh, so far uh, but yes uh, it's not it's not growing actually yeah who uh, sorry sorry for not giving milind a good a proper introduction at the start of the program because uh, of the noise in the background here milind tell us a little about yourself yeah so actually uh, i'll just go a little back uh, a flashback into history uh, from the documents that i found at my home and I, whatever i heard from our elders my origins are in were in kundai uh, kunaim as we call it uh, one of the ancestors about 200 or 210 years back moved to bardes and settled in anjuna and started his business uh he flourished but uh, later on i believe uh, there was a decline in his business and uh, it was not a we were we were not doing really well my grandfather was born in uh, 1897 and he came to uh, mumbai at the age of 10 uh, he got you know uh, he settled over here he studied in uh, st sebastian goan high school went to wilson college went to grand medical he became a doctor he started practicing and then he continued so my father was also born uh, in in mumbai i was also born in uh, mumbai i studied over here and pretty much uh, my family i live with my family over here with my wife my son is uh, is abroad and my mother 90 years old mother so that's our, our family so i actually studied uh, from a commerce discipline i got into uh, cost accounting i became associate cost accountant uh, went on to work in consulting um, initially then to uh, a tata group pharma company and uh, then i switched my gears and got into information technology to work in a erp company and later on in uh, accenture and now i am on my own since last 4 uh, years Left that's, job and, uh, that's a very that's a very uh, you know a lot of jumps in careers and and moving to new challenges and new fields which is also very interesting the way you did it from from cost and works accountancy which is a tough field into go, going into software in that sense which is another tough and challenging field but right. but as far as stamps go in in this uh, narrow niche of uh, portuguese india stamps who would you say are, are like you know the real serious collectors from around around india itself you know bombay goa wherever okay uh, as far as i know there are very few uh, portuguese india uh, collectors uh, i would say one the ones who have exhibited their collections is uh, umesh kakeri uh, then there is dr umesh kakeri is his former engineer former engineer uh, re- sorry yeah. current engineer engineer former goa engineering college student yeah yes yes that's right yeah the same yeah. um then there is one dr narendra sabu narendra sabu he he specializes in postal covers and he is also won uh, you know medals for his collection um then my friend daniel disuza uh, from asagaon he is also a collector uh, and there are few people that that i have heard but i have not interacted with uh, with them actually yeah. but uh, you know what is important is if you are a serious stamp collector it's important that you uh, get attached to a stamp collecting society because that's where you can uh, meet fellow uh, stamp collectors i became yeah. part of uh, portuguese uh, philatelic society pps which is uk based and yeah. club philatelico portugal cfp Me- yeah. member of uh, both of them and i have written some articles in their uh, bulletins uh, at that point of time i got uh, mentors in pps uh, you know there yeah. is a person called uh, roger lawson uh, and uh, dave davis is no more these were two people and of course dr tiotone and disuza uh, i am really indebted to the, uh, both uh, all three of them for giving me encouragement and also giving lot of uh, 
uh, knowledge about uh, this they had phenomenal knowledge about you know uh, especially the two ones uh, two from pps yeah a lot of uh, knowledge about uh, the portuguese in their times and, and so on yeah so 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 that's uh, really interesting in in a sense because uh, you know this field is not quite visible to to all of us but it is there it's existing uh is it is it costly to be a stamp collector is it a costly hobby so yes it is uh, it is costly um, to be a stamp collector I, it depends on um, which field you want to focus on so there are different ways in which you can collect stamps and and it's not necessarily accumulating stamps what happens is as a school boy collector i used to just get the stamps and put them into album but what you need to do is also understand about uh, that country that country's history uh, culture geography and so on and uh, get information about those uh, the stamps that are issued by the country so one is you can one approach you can take is you can go by a particular country uh, the first thing to do is to get a catalog so there are some publishing houses like uh, there is mundifil which specializes uh, for portuguese colonies including india former colonies there is stanley gibbons which comes out with uh, publication uh, the catalogs every year or almost alternate year about different uh, countries they list all the stamps uh, the prices uh, the technical details like what paper was used in which year it was issued what were the perforations etc all the technical details um, but then you have to also get information about uh, that particular issue and why it was uh, you know circulated etc what sort of uh, how it was used so then there there are postal covers so that that is a postal history part where postal covers like this for example this is a postal cover the stamp yeah. is actually yeah. used on uh, typically what happens is you remove the stamp and put it in the album but i think the more value is for a postal cover so that postal cover actually helps you to uh see what route was taken by the from where it was posted and to whom it was addressed which route it actually took how many days it took and so on and th this becomes very important in special circumstances like wars etc where there is a censorship mark and all that so postal history is one aspect the third aspect uh, the third uh, you know classification that one can follow is uh, uh, go thematic so you yeah. can actually go yeah. for themes themes like olympics or butterflies um vatican you can go for uh, you know transportation so i have another interest in ships and boats uh, i have a collection separate collection of course it is not growing now but i decided to you know just to break from the monotony of only sticking to one uh, uh, topic that is portuguese and i thought yeah. i'll go for even ships and boats so uh, if you go th thematic it is not really costly i would say but if you stick to a particular country then it can get, get very expensive because the material won't be available now coming back to portuguese india unfortunately lot of material that is the stamps and the covers have gone out of the country because foreigners have actually bought those collections and they built their collections i understand that there are this is what i have heard i am not very sure uh, very few families are holding some uh, you know their collections but they never show it to people so there is no way to you know understand whether those collections are uh, you know what is the worth of those uh, collections is yes. yeah very interesting very interesting and uh, when 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 uh, you know when you start focusing on these subjects of course i get your point you are saying that if you have a narrow specialization it probably is easier to cover it whereas if it's so vast then the it's a bottomless pit you you have to Yeah. spend a lot of time and energy but but when it comes to you know in our school days we had a lot of people who were still in stamp collecting i remember there were outlets in mapsa panjim where uh, they would actually be you know creating these small labels and saying we are we are philatelist we sell stamps you can buy stamps we are numismatists we sell coins you know there were a lot of organizations of these hobbies so so uh, would it be true to say that stamp collecting as a hobby helps young people in in the sense of knowing more about their world understanding the geography history of the place and all that 
yeah definitely definitely it would uh, be helpful because actually um, times as i would say are sort of ambassadors of that particular country and it was countries like uh, ussr particularly if you see eastern bloc and particularly ussr you you see their stamps were very very interesting because there were they were bigger size uh, stamps and there were uh, they covered a lot of uh, uh, you know themes so um, you can actually learn about uh, uh, about that particular uh, country or uh, or that topic if you you know focus uh, focus on that and coming back to your point at that what i have heard again because since i'm i was not never based out of uh, goa uh, there were uh, some you know stamp collectors come dealers uh, they used to correspond with uh, you know people from west uh, and exchange uh, stamps so i think anthony bisuza or somebody from farm yeah. pharma there was a shop uh, i heard who had a lot of uh, samson um the uh, i think uh, one miss narona from ukasai he he was also uh, famous uh, then there is one lady called uh, um i i don't remember her name but she was also quite uh, you know uh, famous uh, stamp collector come dealer actually uh, so there were dealers and there was in goan stamps or i mean also with indian stamps there was lot of interest Uh, at that point uh, because uh, they were uh, quite you know not easy to get so to say so there was a lot of and what um, what happened is actually um, when the wars the great wars came the first world war and second world war came um, the stamp supplies from lisbon to uh, the colonies uh, got slowed down because the shortage of paper and even the transportation was also becoming difficult so and the admin local administration had to run the show so what they did is actually they took the existing stock uh, stock of stamps yeah. and they perforated it vertically and then they surcharged the both portions with newer values so that the the stamp that one stamp could be split into two and it could be used so it was you know um, what should i say it was a economy uh, type of is a forced economical uh, measure sometimes even the surcharge stamps were recharged again i see uh, that is what, another thing uh, interesting historical thing is when in 1905 when there was a revolution in portugal uh, and the republican government came so the king was assassinated and all that so king stamp was uh, over printed with uh, diagonal wording of republica um right. and then it was reused so they because the revolution happened and they didn't it was not well prepared sort of well thought of administration had to run but at the same time they didn't want to you know continue using king stamps so they um, uh, overprinted that and in, so those are called lisbon um, uh, republicas but then there are uh, goan republic uh, republicas also so some stamps which were in uh, short supply over here as a as a emergency measure were printed at the NAS, uh, i think the national uh, printing press over here and and also the bnu the bank uh, banku uh, um, national national uh, yeah in their printing press because it was a tre- treasury there, there was a value attached to that right so uh, and there is a difference between the lettering so you can make out from the lettering itself whether it is a lisbon republica or a local republic as it as they call it which was actually produced in goa so you some mentioned, sorry so learned uh, by this yeah yeah you mentioned yeah. how uh, stamps were used as a kind of a, a, a kind of a ambassador goodwill ambassador for the country in yeah. the eastern, eastern european countries in particular and they used they send a lot of uh, design stamps which which uh, showed their countries in a particular light and and you know i mean from from their point of view uh, yeah. the soviets going to the moon and all those kind of things right uh, it's correct uh, yeah there were these small countries in the gulf also no which uh, made made a lot of money apparently by selling very colorful circular yes. stamps diamond shaped stamps and umal kuwe right. kuelan and those kind of countries right right absolutely uh, you know so in fact of bhutan for example bhutan has a stamp which has got uh, 
there is a I, I don't have that but I, what i heard is there is a stamp which is a circular stamp uh, which has its national anthem written on on that you know circular stamp so I that see. yeah so that actually such items become very popular in collectors uh, each one would like to have that portugal uh, ha- has a stamp which was cre- printed on cork uh, you know skin so of a bark of a cork tree okay. they printed a stamp on, so on a on the wood the stamp is there and yeah. there is a gum so you can uh, you know so because these are different cork, yeah. of, uh, cork is is typical of portugal and and uh, you know yeah. it's known it's connected with portugal so they made that yeah. in fact the 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 anthropologist robert newman has written a paper yeah. on on stamps and uh, goa and different colonies and how they encouraged or discouraged local themes to yes, be printed, yes. printed in colonial times and all this kind of thing right, right, fascinating right, right. subject so so yeah. so basically you would agree that stamps helps uh, young youngsters and not only youngsters others to to get a better understanding of their world of the geography of the history of the politics of so many subjects all rolled in one would that uh, make sense yeah yeah absolutely absolutely it also and if you are uh, as i said if you are part of a stamp collecting society then you get to read their past bulletins and uh, learn from them if you discover something new you can publish it so um of course uh, where these societies are based uh, people actually gather together on a sunday or so i think even in mumbai also there is uh, um there is one group that meets uh, philatelic congress of india or something uh, since i don't collect india india stamps as such i have not uh, you know uh, gone on that path but idea is that you can meet and you can exchange your um, uh, stamps or even your notes or any new discoveries that are made because uh, certain things become visible only when um, you know a new postal cover some suppose if it is uh, obtained by somebody which is little unusual then that kind of a uh, discovery helps people to uh, you know understand it for example i actually there is a there is a stamp that was issued in 1876 it was i think said that it was issued in june 1876 or so but i found one cover when it was used in april 1876 so i just notified to the uh, publisher that look this is what um, it is so obviously if there is a postal mark then it is possible that is that it was actually used uh, because the uh, um especially about goa and other enclaves there was this there were there were these bulletins that were uh, issued in which all just like our gazette is there in olden times these bulletins were there so uh, all official decisions were uh, published in that and if i am not mistaken i have not been there uh, xavier uh, institute of historical research as these um, you know bulletins so which is a great source of uh, you know information for any serious researcher if he wants to of course knowledge of uh, portuguese is also required but at least that information is available to uh, people to further you know study and research okay to shift subjects a bit to shift yeah. subjects away from stamps and talk about your grandfather's diary okay every once in a while you tell us about this fascinating stories that your grandfather encountered in the mumbai of the 30s 40s 20s when was it uh, almost uh, 1900 and yeah 20 onwards 20. to 19 and and no before 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 you say something i want to add that his writings are fascinating and your translations are equally fascinating from marathi into oh, thank you so much Yeah, yeah, yeah. But tell us a bit about this diary. How you came across it? I think it's a valuable piece of work. It gives yes, us yes. an insight into those times and those people. Tell us, tell us. Yeah, yeah. So um, my grandfather was born in 1892 in Anjuna, uh, Mazalwado or uh, Chiwar Wado. Uh, when he was 10, he came to uh, Mumbai to study further because. english education was not possible in uh, in goa at, at that time only portuguese education or vernacular medium, medium education was possible so he came to uh, mumbai and he got uh, uh, sort of admission in saint sebastian goan high school at uh, thakurdwar dabul uh, he he passed from there and he uh, got admitted to wilson college 
and in 2 years he joined grand medical uh, to become finally passed out in 1919 uh, and started practicing in in goa um, he his vision was to come back to goa after retirement but by that time his fam- family uh, the children and we grandchildren were uh, settled in mumbai so his he was really longing uh, to come back to goa but he couldn't uh, do that and at an advanced stage he became insomniac uh, but he had lot of experience of you know meeting different kind of people um, in between in 1919 uh, when he was a, a youngster he along with other goans uh, formed uh, this goa hindu association uh, where it's a big it's a big, it's a big association it's a big association done a lot of work and published a lot of books yes, and yes. culturally right, right. held the community together yeah. so he was one of the founder members of it one of the seven founders yes yes he was uh, office bear he was also uh, associated with uh, this mumbai uh, grantha sangrahalaya which is uh, mumbai uh, library uh, sort of a state level library um and i think i believe he was also coordinating with other goan organizations but i don't have that information somewhere i have read that he was also coordinating with uh, you know other fellow uh, goans uh, catholics uh, uh, i think because there were different different organizations and what i understand is on saturdays on the curb side of girgaon uh, all these goans used to meet and they used to uh welcome the new members that were coming to mumbai and then uh, that new member was accommodated in uh, somebody's house just for you know uh, for a night stay and bath with no money taken from them they were the new incumbent had to sort of arrange his own breakfast lunch everything but only to stay these to accommodate so that's how even in our house also i understand that some uh, uh, people were staying and until they got sort of adjusted got their jobs and then they uh, moved out so the, that was the amazing culture community spirit, amazing spirit in yes. that yes yes can't imagine that now yeah. actually so when he became very old he he sort of uh, became insomnia he couldn't get sleep or even you know he used to wake up at odd hours and since he had lot of uh, social um, you know dealing with social uh, uh, this organization and meeting different people he uh, started grabbing paper that was lying around him and he would write the you know the stories or whatever his experiences were and in vacation time uh, young kids in the house they used to uh, copy that neatly into these uh, school diaries uh, you know this 500 pages diary so um, this is all handwritten in um, marathi and there are about 792 pages so i was always curious to get uh, you know read these uh, stories they were actually lying with my uncle and he kindly sort of gave it to me and these were also lying for very long time so when i started on my own i had a lot of time at uh, on hand my son suggested to me that i should use uh, ai service uh, which actually helps in uh, translating speech to text uh, translation so uh, for marathi he could find a service free service which i used and uh, i used to read those almost 792 pages were there so i used to read almost 5 5 pages a uh, day uh, 60 to 70% correct uh, sort of uh, correct text was getting gathered and 30% correction was required then i copied that and you know stored them in uh, uh, in in documents and later actually the problem was that these stories were written in a random way there was no chronology to that so what i did is i i first of all gave a title to each story some stories had already some titles some stories i actually gave the title which is which i felt is appropriate and then for each story i actually uh, uh, sort of divided his life into uh, phases uh, such as say from uh, birth to uh, 10 year 10 in anjuna then he came to his uh, the school days then his college and medical education then his practice and post retirement and each story i related to which period it uh, pertains so i made a made an excel sheet for that uh, then the challenge was that uh, some stories were repetitive okay one story was very short and then same story was repeated in another uh, diary uh, at at length so i couldn't really figure out you know uh, this so one way one uh, 
uh, approach that i adopted is i found try to find the characters in that story so let's say that uh, story had milin uh, frederick michel i identified them and then looking at the names i could actually sort and then see whether there is any similarity between the story so that's how i could find some overlap then i um, also uh, saw which stories had what sort of morals or say sort of teaching lessons uh, and what were his emotions you know whether he feel felt angry or whether he was happy or was he was felt cheated or whatever you know uh, the uh, and that's how actually uh, now i have the stories i need to edit them further but then in between what happened is uh, is the diaspora group that we have i thought why not actually translate these some of these stories and then share it with people and uh, maybe we can share uh, get some uh, you know feedback from people i i also got uh, privately some feedback from saying that you you can you know uh, how to translate them because i am not a professional uh, translator as such i got some good feedback privately uh, which i used um and then i i have selectively sort of translated them but one at some point of time i would like to uh, make a book out of uh, that uh, i have the even cover in my mind uh, oh. and of course pages are already defined so um you know the structure is ready but i am not taking a target on myself uh, to push myself because all uh, all my life i worked with uh, uh, you know stringent targets to <laughs> now i want to take it a little easy and enjoy the process not just go reach the goal uh, by you know pushing myself into it so just what you what you already it. done is very fascinating no doubt about it i enjoyed listening to it uh, and i think it's a great piece of work because very often we take our ancestors for granted but uh, we have so much to learn from them but having said that for example could you give us an example of one story uh, like you know what what it contained just for example yeah so the story which i um, liked is uh, is uh, in that uh, story what happened is uh, my grandfather was actually called one day uh, early morning uh, somebody came running to his place and said uh, there is one um, you know uh, a young child that is uh, has got epileptic uh, uh, you know fit so can you just come so he said that uh, uh, he first inquired whose patient was that whose family because that uh, he was a family doctor so similarly there were family doctors attached to every family because he was uh, very sure that he will not get into somebody else's uh, practice you know by get so he got a feedback that the family doctor is old and the family doctor does not do any um, you know a family uh, a visits uh, at odd hours so my grandfather agreed and he went over there to that chawl where uh, you know people had gathered and as soon as he entered the room uh, he realized looking at the uh, baby's uh, you know uh, the the facial expressions and all that he realized that the baby is no more alive but uh, how to you know break that news he was uh, he was really sad so he just pretended that he uh, checked the uh, baby and then he came out in the chawl and in the veranda he actually stood there two three people uh, accompanied him where he broke the news to them and then he told them to come to the to his dispensary and collect the death certificate and and so on and then he moved on and as he actually uh, was uh, taking the stairs stairs down he could hear people you know uh, screams from that house obviously uh, everybody was uh, shocked uh, because of the death of that uh, tiny uh, boy um so the and he then my grandfather went home and he went on for his duty almost after about a year or so uh, there was one evening at say it was say 7 or 7:30 in the evening uh some somebody came to his dispensary and uh, he said that i need to pay your visit fees so my grandfather said i don't uh, recognize you. i am i don't think i have come to your house and treated anybody because i am not your family doctor as well so then he said look uh, uh, you know many about a year back you had come uh, to our place early morning at 5 o'clock or whatever and uh, you had uh, actually 
uh, checked my uh, you know son and then he was not he was already uh, uh, this thing he was not uh, alive so my grandfather said that uh, i didn't do anything i didn't you know treat him because by the time i reached he was already gone so um, and since the circumstances such that i can't take any fees but that guy was hell bent he said that after the boy passed away i uh, we couldn't stay in that house my wife was also very sad so we had to go back to our village and now we have come back and we are staying at a different location we were restarting our life and uh, uh, then he said that unless you take this money my child's soul will not attain moksha you know um, yeah. so so you have to take this money so my grandfather was said that he writes that he was in a dilemma uh, one thing is that he did he was very sure that he will not compromise with his uh, principles uh, he had decided certain principles which also he has written in uh, in his diary uh, the second thing is on the other hand he he could understand the sentiments of that uh, person who was talking about this child and when he uh, that person made a pitch like that um, my father couldn't uh, my grandfather couldn't say no to him so he was in a fix and in us uh, wondering what to do he uh, he spotted this donation box that was of go in the association which was uh, fixed on the wall of his uh, dispensary so he told that uh, you know guy um, to put those 2 rupees into that box he said i don't want to take it but if you still wish then please uh, do so so he said that i saw that uh, uh, my Uh, the conflict of uh, you know my principles and the sentiments or the feeling of that uh, person for his uh, so that actually these diaries um, i think reflect the thinking of those people you know that kind of that in those times how people used to think and they are, they they think very differently than what we do even I, i also personally feel that i also act differently than how they would act there was lot of uh, uh understanding of each other's uh, you know difficulties and things like that i mean some of those stories are really uh, amazing, uh, there, amazing. Was system, amazing. there was a system that uh, the family doctor uh, used to send a monthly bill it was not per visit so uh, many times what used to happen is uh, people and he he had one principle again that once he sends the bill he will not remind people uh, send reminders to collect it was he felt that i i shouldn't beg for my fees they should come to me on my own on my own merit okay but he said that at at times i could see people coming in to take my treatment uh, but they haven't paid my previous bills but at that time uh, because i'm a doctor i have taken hippocratic uh, that oath i need to treat them and i used to console myself saying that that man must be having some financial difficulties that's why he has not paid it's not that the man is bad but he is not in a position to pay that's why he has not paid i used to console myself so this thinking is very dif- difficult in these times i i don't think we you know go extra miles to see the other person's point of view it's mostly people in me included push their own point of view to uh, so that is what i found the diaries are uh, you know Um, interesting it's, 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 it's amazing melin because uh, for at least three reasons the first is you have uh, salvaged those diaries and got them back into our minds and reminded us of all this important uh, era secondly i think we have need to pay tribute to the past generations and you know we think that we are always getting better than them which is not true and thirdly you know i want to also be grateful for our friendship of many years over the net first uh, it was goa net yeah. and other place probably and goa research net and things like that so it's really nice to know you over the years and i'm grateful that also you you know the goan diaspora has kept in touch with their roots in such a intense way even if we don't always understand it we don't always do justice to it we in goa don't make it easier for people outside to keep in touch and all that but uh, i think i really need to appreciate and uh, just place it on record here thank you so much for your time and for sharing uh, you know yeah. all this with us in the last yeah the feeling hour. is mutual and uh, i would like to uh, you know thank you not not sure. only for giving me this opportunity to express myself but being a catalyst 
to you know connect so many people i mean take the case of i just i just enjoy doing it i think that's the least we can do now we owe it we owe it to yeah. the to the diversity of the goan diaspora to to keep yeah. track of it and to and to appreciate it and to acknowledge it and to you know kind of spur it to do greater things because uh, goa is what it is also because of the diaspora everyone is added to it grand medical yeah. college was 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 a famous uh, medical school and uh, goans have been there from the earliest of days from bauta ajilad and all these people people you know from yeah. the start of it virtually in such big numbers so i think we should not forget that thank you so much thank you for your time once again yeah, yeah? thanks my pleasure yeah Good thanks night. okay bye bye